everyone. Welcome to the next picture from our kitchen item series. So I've just been eating some chocolate and um, it's still in my mouth. <laughs> I'm very naughty. Right, <laughs> we have some strawberries today with our um, jars. I'm thinking these storage jars like sugar, flour, that sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to just look at the colours that I've got and thinking about what would make the best strawberry colour and I'm thinking the vermilion is probably the one that I think is closest. And I'm just going to start by doing those. So here's my vermilion. I need to sharpen it actually. Oh, just broken. The lead's just broken in half. Look at that. So a bit of it has come off. Oops. And it's sort of Oh, <laughs> that's a bit odd. I'm actually going to snap that off and resharpen it. I don't really get too upset when a set like this breaks. Oops. Um, because, um, well, they were sent to me by Castle, so I didn't pay for them. But um, that doesn't make them any less precious. But they're not that expensive and I've got a few more vermilion I think from other castle sets that I've got anyway so that's okay it's um it's if it's my favorite color that breaks that I would be more upset so I like the um olive greens things like that um yeah and the um um, what's it called? Purple, 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 purple lake, purple lake deep and mauve deep. They're very pretty. Anyway, we're not going to be using those today. I'm not sure what that is in there. Just that. I'm going to colour it red as if there's another strawberry underneath. So I don't really know. I don't think it's a piece of the top. It could be, but it's not now. <laughs> Uh, it, it's strawberry. I'm just sort of roughly colouring really. I'm trying to make them a little bit darker where they're near to the pot and where they're near to each other but it's quite difficult because I want to get a nice vibrant colour down anyway on most of them. See these I've managed to leave them a little bit lighter in the middle to give them a bit of shape. I've done that. I'll try to do that a bit. It's tricky. So there we go. That's our strawberry. I'm not going to do much more than that with those. I think they're quite pretty. Let's just give them a white. Now the greenery on a strawberry I always think is quite dark and maybe slightly um, slightly bluey. I'm just looking at what I've got. I'm thinking thallo green light is going to be my friend here. I've got to find it. Here we go. So fallow green light. Now it's interesting because I didn't used to swatch my colours at all. I just used to go for it. And um, I have started swatching. And I think I've worked out why. I used to find that I didn't want to swatch because um, it took time up and I just wanted to get on and colour. But when you want to pick exactly the right colour and the base of the pencil, this bit, doesn't truly reflect the colour of the lead. And sometimes even what the lead looks like to the eye is different to how it looks down on the paper. Then swatching can be useful. Also, if you have a set of just 12 or 24, you can sort of scribble them on a bit of paper beside you and just check it out or, you know, there's not many colours to choose from, you're probably going to end up using them all anyway. When you've got 120, it makes it a little more tricky. Um, <clears throat> so I'm looking at my jar. Now I'm quite lo in thinking a bit Port Merini. Um, hmm, should we do them like that? Yeah, let's, let's do it. But slightly differently. Um, already got blue though that's okay okay so I'm going to use the Delft blue to start with I think just check oh yeah yeah that's what I'll do so we'll start with the Delft and we'll do I want the lid to be this color 
um, it's a bit it hasn't been sharpened if you look at they come like flat so I'm just gonna turn it in my sharpener so I get a bit of a point I'm getting debris everywhere so the lid I'm gonna do first with the delft and I'm going to go around the edge with quite a, a lot of layers to make it dark and then a bit less towards the middle so it looks more rounded, hopefully. Maybe a little bit more colour there and there, like that. I'm going to leave a gap. We've got a striped pot, so I'm going to stripe the lid as well. So this bit here and this bit here are going to be different to the rest. I might not do them the same colour as the main jar. I might do them in a sort of silvery colour and it won't look, it doesn't look like Port Marion even now. I was looking, I was in a shop, yeah, yesterday and it had a lot of kitchen stuff. It isn't like, I used to love going in um, kitchen shops like, um, what's it called, um, Lakeland and similar. There used to be a very old fashioned kitchen shop in the town where I used to live and it would have everything, chopping boards, knives, storage containers, um, all the latest gadgets. In the basement there'd be coffee machines. It was fabulous, it closed down unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same on the other lid before I do the jars. And um, the shop that we've got in our town isn't as fun as that. It has Card, greetings cards. I think a lot of shops sell cards because they can make a bit of money from them. And napkins and matches and stools and um, baskets. Lots of baskets. I do love baskets. There's a limit to how much space you can have for baskets. Um, and I'm tempted to get a basket actually to go beside my new bookcase. They do these sort of tall thin ones some in some places I could put a few things I don't know what just just I just want a basket I'm thinking I'm gonna do the stripe of the jar in a lighter color than the lid because or else it's that's quite a dominating dark blue so there are some really pretty and um, the cobalt blues are really pretty and I think they're very similar to in tone to this so I'm going to use the cobalt blue um elum. the light I think I'm going to use the cobalt blue deep and the cobalt blue light because there's a bit of a there's obviously a difference between the deep and the light you can see here so I think that'll work um I'm going to leave the lid I'm going to do the pot next so here's the light. Now we want to try and emphasize the fact that the pots are rounded, not the jars, sorry, storage jars are rounded, not flat. So we want to really build up the color here on the edge and then fade it towards the middle. And we can't see that edge very well, but we can see where the middle of the label is. So we can use that as a help for us. Yeah, so I went in that kitchen shop yesterday, but I didn't see, they had some Port Marion china cups and storage jars and things which are just blue and white not this shade of blue at all i just picked this shade because i liked it um it's more of a hmm, cerulean i guess closer to cerulean blue anyway i ended up just buying some really really pretty napkins which i didn't need but they were gorgeous and the husband liked them too so we just bought them on a whim because and um, yeah, I bought some and um, quite a big collection of cards because I all I always like to have cards in because I'm really um, you turn the calendar and suddenly it's someone's birthday now. And if you've got a card in, we've got a post box just up the street. I tend to keep stamps in my purse as well, so then I can just quickly pop a card in the post if I need to in an emergency. I'm quite liking this with a white stripe but hmm. <laughs> uh, what to do? Maybe I will leave it with a white stripe. I think it looks nice. 
but we can't define the shape of the jar with a white stripe. So what we need to do is add a little bit of grey to the edges. Let's do that. So I'm going to use my Payne's grey because it's my lightest cool grey. I don't want a brownie grey to go with this blue. I'm not, I'm not doing the top of that yet. And I'm just going to add just a little, just like that. So I'm hoping that it's not really going to be visible, or not massively, but it'll just add to the shape. I hope that's the plan. There we go. Now, the best of the lid, I think I'm going to use my Cobalt Blue Deep that I, uh, that I grabbed. So I know it's going to match, it's a little bit paler. So I'm just going to go in there with it. Again, trying to just build the colour up a little more on the outside, a little bit more less towards the centre. I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to have to just stop that. Mm -hmm. Right, that's better. <laughs> I didn't want to sneeze really loudly. So that's our cobalt blue deep part done. Um, I want to do a bit of shadowing and things, but I think we'll do this little bowl first. Um, I'm not really sure what colour to do it though. Um, whether we introduce a new colour or if we just stick with the blues. We could do a bit of purpley blue. Let's, I know, this is a beautiful colour. Let's use this cornflower blue. Now it's not blue. It's slightly purpley. It's almost like a heather purple actually. And I'm going to use it for just this little design on here. And you'll see it's quite a bluey. Although it's, it's called blue, it's slightly purpley. I just think it's a really pretty colour. And I think it will sort of tie together our red and blue, you know, because purple is red and blue. So hopefully, hopefully it'll work. I have no idea what I'm going to do for the shell. But that's that bit. And then I'm thinking, is there something a little lighter that I could use? Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to try the mauve. It might be a little bit too light. I'm going to give it a go because I can darken it, but if I try something that's too dark, it's going to not work. So here is the move. Gosh, I have got goosebumps. There. It's so cold in here today, which is absolutely lovely. <laughs> it's been so hot. It's supposed to be record temperatures today, but it's cloudy, and so it's nice and cool in here, and uh, it's just lush to use an old-fashioned word. Children used to use the word lush when they were at primary school because their dinner ladies used to use it. But it's such an old-fashioned word. I'm just fiddling a bit now with this. Now the shelf. Should we go for another slightly purpley colour? Mm don't think so. Maybe a slightly... I think I'm going to start with the Delft Blue actually for the shelf, which is what we use for the lid, but I'm going to use it lightly. And then to, to add, make it look more interesting. I'm actually going to use the mauve and I want a bit more colour in the core, in the edges. I'm almost creating this colour actually by the looks of it, aren't I? going to bring that colour in so that we've got a bit of colour on each bit. So quite a lot of white areas there where I didn't cover it very well. But I still want the edges to be darker. Now I do want some shadow but I'm going to do that in a different colour. Um, 
Yeah, actually, I think I'll use the Payne's Grey for our shadowing. I think it'll work quite well. So like we did with our very first picture, we did some, sh um, the jars were in front of each other when we put in a bit of shadow. We're going to do the same thing here. So this time just to the left of the jar. Oh, I haven't done the labels. Hmm. I'll be doing those in a minute. No, it's quite hard to see that because it's brown. It's not really very dark. I might have to use a bit of black. shadow around some of the strawberries as well and underneath them under here now I was also thinking under the lids right no yeah the labels um I might grab the delft blue again actually and do a really dark outline. So I'm going to sharpen that so I can get an intense colour around here. All the way around. And on the little one, it's quite a pretty um, shape, isn't it? The way Jan has drawn it. There we go. And inside, I'm not going to keep it white because our jar's supposed to be white. So I will just use the uh, the cobalt blue light. But really, really lightly. So I'm going to hold it a bit further down the pencil on its side and just use a very light movement and touch like that. There we go. So it does, it looks slightly grey really, but that's fine. That suits me. Now I'm just going to end with a little bit of white pen. I feel that our strawberries need a little bit of shine, so I'm going to use this um, Sakura 8 and uh, just put a little bit on the edges. That's a very noisy magpie. Like that. And we could put some high shine on the lids. Mm, let's, let's put a little bit here. Down there. Ooh. Again, just run it parallel to the... Um, it's going to show up more on the very dark blue. Run it parallel to the edge like this. And I'm thinking, because this is a ceramic, could be shiny. Whoops, I messed that up a bit. There we go. I think we will leave it there. The other one, because it's very pale, it's not going to show up white pen, so I'm not going to put any on there. But there we go, we finished our first row of um, items, so that's uh, that. That's good. Um, well done if you've coloured along and tune in tomorrow to uh, start the next row. We'll go all the way back across and start on the on the far left. But uh, thank you today for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring. <laughs>